So the only way you can raise your status is by really what we call status frames or power frames or authority frames. And you can't even, even like Oren Claff talks about it in one of his books, Pitch Anything. Yep. Probably one of the only sales trainers that I've ever come across besides what we do that actually teach how to work with human behavior, that teach social dynamics, because most sales trainers just, they don't know what they don't know, right? They've never been taught that. And so with our social status, we want to raise our status by certain words we use, or I'll give you an example. So let's say if you sell B2B and you walk into a, a boardroom and let's say they're all sitting there, you know, they've got their, you know, their proposals in front of them or whatever, and you're walking in and let's say the big CEO hasn't walked in yet and he walks in. A lot of times they'll do, they'll kind of like want to take authority over you or like power or status, whatever you want to call it. And they'll walk in and be like, Hey, uh, I only have 60 minutes right on the dot. So, you know, let's get started. Well, if you're like, Oh, I really appreciate you guys being here and making the time for us to talk. All you're doing in the prospect's mind is what? Lowering your status. I appreciate you taking the time to be with me because now it's like you're needy. Like their time is, is more important than your time. Like, ugh, gross. So what I'd want to do is I'd want to take that status back. And I'd say, oh gosh, you you guys must have a lot of time on your hands today. I've got 35, 40 minutes max before my next appointment. Should we go ahead and get started? And you'll watch the CEO like, huh? You'll literally watch their, their guard just come down because your status, it's not all the way raised yet, but it just got raised. Instead of them trying to take power over you and lower your status, you literally just flip the script, as some people would say, and you raise your status where they view you differently. And when your prospects start to view you differently, they become far more open to what you're offering. And I know that was a rant, but that's where no, it, it was great. And and I think it's funny because I run an agency, right? That That's the my full-time job and, and from yeah. a consulting standpoint. And it's the same thing in the marketing world. Everyone's starting to sound like everyone else. Every ad is starting to look like everybody else's. Yeah. Everyone's giving the same guarantee, the same lines, the same promises, yeah. the same hooks. Everyone's copying everyone. And we try to tell our clients, yeah, everyone's zigging, zag. You have to be a little bit, di- you have yeah. to be a little. And yeah. they're like, no, no, I saw this person and this is the ad, they're, this is the ad they're doing. Yeah. So it's it's so true. And I'll make a comment on that. You know, our our chief revenue officer's name's uh Marco. He's he's uh he's one of my partners in the firm as well. And our ads crush everybody's ads. I mean, we know what everybody's spending and, and their ad costs. We just hear about it through the grapevine and we're like, man, like they're doing really well revenue wise, but their profit margins are so much lower because they're spending three. I mean, they're having to spend three times as much to acquire as a lead as we are. And that's because we take a much different approach. We raise our status. Like if you ever watch me in any of our ads, I'm not going to be like, I know you, you're probably thinking like, this sounds too good to be true. Or I know you're skeptical right now. All I'm doing when I say that is I'm lowering my status. Because why would I want them to be even think like that? So we might say, now, luckily for you, we've got a PDF that's going to do this, this, and this. And I go through it. And at the end, I'll be like, and by the way, you're welcome. <laughs> because I'm raising my status. Like, Love why it. would I th- put skepticism in their mind? Why would I put, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is in their mind, like other marketers do. And that's why our ad cost is like nothing. I mean, we just ran a challenge where we had 17,000 people register for it, like a five-day awesome. challenge a couple of weeks ago. And our average uh, cost per lead was less than $6 a lead, which is unheard right, yeah. of from like Facebook and Instagram ads. Crazy. Yeah, your ads are good. And I want to talk to you about online advertising in a second. But if you're talking about how salespeople are all starting to sound the same and it triggers PTSD, part of what you do in your business, well, not park, your main business is teaching people how to be salespeople. Yeah. Are you now worried that you're going to crowd the market with everyone who's sounding the same? And the lines that you're now teaching people how to say and the things you're teaching people how to say is eventually going to become that triggers a sale. That's a sales line again. Oh, I know this because every other salesperson is telling me that Mm. if you're constantly training salespeople the way, wouldn't that eventually be the outcome anyways? Well, our, our sales techniques are not something new. Our sales techniques are just human behavior 101. So it's the way the brain is already working. I mean, you're talking about 8 billion plus people on the earth, one out of eight people. I don't know if everybody knows this one, literally one out of every eight people that walk on this planet is in some type of sales position. So you're talking about 1.3, 1.4 billion people. 
I'm not sure we're ever going to be able to reach those people in my lifetime. You know, I'm not 15 years old. I just don't think Ano- another podcast appearance and maybe, man, like, another we'll, we'll, podcast we'll appearance. Another I just don't think us. that's going to happen. But the thing is, is like we're we're using techniques. This is what I always train. Like we have a, a, a program that's called Advanced Inner Circle. And we only let 50 people a month in that. It's very high level, you know, it's a, it's a, it's quite a bit of funds. They already have to be making a certain amount of commissions every month in their job before we even let them in. And it's usually a 60 day waiting list to even get in after an application. And that's not a sales technique. It's just, we keep them at 50 people a month. We can't have thousands a month on there because it would dilute the the fulfillment of that product. And what I always tell them on there, uh, cause each of them to even to be on there, they have to be making, I think at least 10 or 12 grand a month already in commissions. So they're not like, you know, broke or whatever. And so what I always tell them is like, look, when you master NEPQ, neuro emotional persuasion questions, you master what we're training you, your prospects don't even feel like they were sold to. They don't feel that you're a salesperson. They view you differently. When your prospects start saying words like you could sell anything to anybody, you could sell ice to an Eskimo. Most of those people never buy. Because they feel like they were sold. They feel like you're just trying to make a commission. So when we train these skills and our, these salespeople, you know, in these different industries start making, you know, 30 grand a month, 50 grand a month, 80 grand a month, their prospects don't feel like they were ever sold to. So if you're a prospect and you don't feel like you're sold to, it's hard for you to pick up on lines like most salespeople would use an option close. Like, do you want the red one or the blue one? Uh, when do you want to take delivery? You know, tomorrow at three or Monday at five, like the assumptive close, like those type of closing techniques people pick up on. But when you're taking them through our process, we take them and they're like building a gap in their own mind from where they are compared to where they want to be, where they feel so much internal tension that, and when a prospect feels internal tension, you can't get them to feel that by telling them they're wrong or telling them why they need to buy or telling them why you're better. That's external sales pressure. That wears off, right? That's why you have cancels and refunds because it wears off. You persuaded them. So what we train salespeople to do is we train them how to get the prospect to do all the work, the prospect to sell themselves, mm-hmm. the prospect to convince you why they feel your offer, your solution is what they're wanting and why they feel it is. Okay. And when we ask commitment questions at the end for them to commit to take the next step, they quite literally don't feel like they're ever sold. So it's just, it's just a different way to look at selling, um, than how most salespeople or, or trainers would look at it as like selling is adversarial, you against the prospect, trying to win them over, pressure them, push them. So you make money. That's literally what average salespeople think sales is in our day. If you want to be like a top 1% earning salesperson where the prospect doesn't even feel like they were sold to after they bought, where it's their idea, not yours, you have to understand that selling is very collaborative. It's you working with the prospect to help them find problems they didn't even think they had and then help them solve those problems. And they just view you more as like the expert, the trusted authority, whereas all the other salespeople, they just view as somebody who's trying to sell them something and they're commoditizing. 